The purpose of this code is to take samples from a signal generator at a rate controlled by a potentiometer. Uh, in setup, we're using uh, two pins. One of them is going to be from our potentiometer. One of them is going to be the pin that's connected to the signal generator. And of course, we need serial communications to be able to communicate with processing code later on. So at the start of the loop, I have a, a time start line here, which is going to be used for timing the circuit all the way at the bottom. So that's the timing. Uh, here we, we have at the top of our loop two analog reads to read my potentiometer and to read the signal generator. And not only are we reading from the signal generator, but we're also sending that, that reading over a serial, which uh, will later be picked up by processing. So here we have a some ifs um, because we have uh, four different sampling frequencies we're trying to switch between for this lab. I've set up the if statement to uh, correspond these four different frequencies to different potentiometer values. So if you were to find the delay time that we want between sampling, sample at different frequencies, in the bottom left we sample at 100 hertz and the alias all the way down to uh, 1 hertz, and then we're sampling at 142 hertz. Uh, but we have units alias all the way down to like 20, and then you only sample at 200. It's getting closer, it's, it's not as low, it's, it's still 95 hertz though. And finally, when we're sampling at 500 hertz, we're still, uh, that's still less than twice of the maximum frequency. So yeah, we're still aliasing, uh, and we're at 195 hertz. Sampling a signal that's a little bit lower, like 215, the Nyquist rate would then be 430 hertz. So technically, if we're sampling above 430 hertz, we should not see aliasing. 100 hertz, we see aliasing. At 140 hertz, we see aliasing. Yeah, we see aliasing even at 200 hertz. And it's not until we get up to 500 hertz, which is above 430, that we start to see actually. Finally, we're sampling and we're getting the correct reconstruction of the signal. Uh, here we have a signal at 100 hertz. So the Nyquist rate is 200 hertz. So technically, so theoretically, we should see the correct representation with the 200 hertz signal and the 500 hertz signal. So if we look over here, we see that the 200 hertz signal is giving us uh, about a 97 hertz reconstruction, which is very close. And the 500 hertz signal is giving us, uh, it looks like it's almost exactly 100 hertz. But uh, as expected with the lower sampling rates, like 141 and uh, the 100 hertz, we are seeing aliasing. We're looking at the 75 hertz signal with a Nyquist rate of 150. So anything sampling above 150 should see no aliasing. And we can see that that is true when we look at the 200 hertz sampling rate. We can see that our uh, reconstructed signal has a frequency of almost exactly 75 hertz, and then it's pretty much exactly 75 hertz with a 500 hertz sample rate. But uh, it's, it's interesting when we're at 141 hertz, which is very close to a good sampling rate, uh, we are seeing a signal that is only slightly aliased, we're looking at like a 67 hertz signal instead of the true 75. Uh, but when we're sampling at 100 hertz, which is, which is pretty low, uh, we see significant aliasing at, uh, and we see a 23 hertz signal instead of the true 75. So here we're at our table and we're going to explore how to do the calculation using the example of a 75 hertz signal sampled at uh, 100 hertz. So we're going to fill in uh, these, this stuff right here. So we calculate a theoretical alias frequency. We kind of follow this process here. We, so this algorithm is kind of helpful. So this is the algorithm we're gonna kind of follow. So first things first, uh, what signal? We're going with a 75 hertz signal. Our Nyquist frequency is 50 hertz, 1.5. So we're gonna use this 1.5 to mosey on over to our, our folding diagram. And if we follow from the starting point here at zero on the bottom left, we follow our line all the way up to 1.5. We'll drop down. So here we can see at the bottom line, we're going to see we're going to see our alias frequency as so we can expect our alias frequency to be 25 hertz and if we actually go and look at uh, a 75 hertz signal sampled at 100 hertz what results is looks like it's about 24 hertz so that's pretty close that's definitely with an error and that's how we would fill out the rest of this table so if we follow that same process for every uh for all 16 cases we get a table like this here's my calculations for every situation looking at the square wave we can almost see the infinite sum of cosines and sines that get smaller in amplitude to make the square wave. Uh, the triangle wave represents well on the oscilloscope and it needs less pieces to create its Fourier series.